No Way Home has finally hit theaters. After over a year of rumors, leaks, trailers, speculation, we finally have the movie, and we can talk spoilers. I would say for me, I enjoyed the film, but the moments where like I perked up the most, it's it began right when Andrew Garfield walks through that portal. And then you've got the the, the piece of the resistance <laughs> is the final reveal. Peter! Hey, Peter! Peter! Wait a minute. Is this about to go down? And you could feel the room. You could just feel the room change the energy. Wait. Wait, is this, is this the moment? Like, I'm getting goosebumps just kind of remembering, right? Just wish we could see Peter. Oh. 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 Uh, you could tell kind of the levels of different Spider-Man fans or how eagle-eyed people were because the second that um, Garfield turned around, some people immediately noticed the eyes. Everyone in our theater was like, <gasps> Boy, I recognize that skinny, slinky body. That was Andrew Garfield. As soon as you see that silhouette, I was like, that's not Tom Holland. I know who that fucking is. And that felt great. <laughs> and then when he gets closer, there was a sort of a collective like, <gasps> gas that goes through the audience again. As he's approaching the portal, I'm telling you, you could feel the air get sucked out of the room in the theater to where everybody was like, and he runs, and everyone's yeah. like, oh. oh. He got close, yeah. and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's happening. It's and, happening. And it was such a great moment. It was exciting. Like I said, you could feel the air get sucked out of the room, and everybody was like, oh, my God. It's happening. It's happening. And, and he comes through the portal, and people see the costume, and there's an initial round of applause and, and, and some cheers. Because at first, when I saw Spider-Man, I was like, oh, hey, here comes Spider-Man. That is not Tom Holland's suit. Oh, wow. He jumps in, and all of us nerds just <laughs> immediately recognize the difference in his suit. And so about a third of the theater was like, oh, 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 and making all these noises. A part of me thought that port was going to close yeah. before he got through it. I'm like, yeah. oh. Yeah. That motherfucker came through. Everyone's clapping and they're just waiting. They're just waiting for the real, real confirmation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's not really confirmed until the mask. It could is be off. another time. <laughs> yeah, it who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he takes the mask off and it's Andrew Garfield's face. <laughs> and then Andrew Garfield just pulls his mask off and it's Andrew Garfield and everybody was like, Yes! <gasps> it was awesome. Garfield, a guy no one will ever believe again in interviews. The werewolf is here! I promise you I am not the werewolf. And everyone's like, you're the werewolf. You're the fucking werewolf. He, he lied to us. He lied to us for two years running. And I hope he continues to lie forever. <laughs> I hope in future people are like, he's doing a new project or something, and people are like, Andrew Garfield, uh, was it nice to... to to share a stage with with uh, Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking Who? about. Who? Sorry, what Who, do you mean? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what you're talking. I'm about. I'm here to promote uh, keep ticking, keep booming. The <laughs> That's sequel. right. Right. Also, Andrew Garfield was so effing good in this movie, and can, can we just give him an Oscar for the combined force of this performance and the eyes of Tammy Faye and tick tick boom and having to deny in every interview that he's in this movie? You're in the new Spider-Man <laughs> No Way Home. Congratulations. What? what? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I'm not in the film. I, I love Spider-Man. I always have. I was so happy to, to, to have played the part. It's Andrew Garfield playing Spider-Man again. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not crying out loud. My man was fighting for his life the last couple months. He deserves an Oscar because honestly, at a certain point with all his interviews just being like, no, I'm not in Spider-Man. Like, stop asking me. I kind of believed it. I was like, Maybe it is just hype. Maybe he's not actually and we're just harassing this poor man. He had me in the first half, not gonna lie. What do people want him to say, yes? You want him to spoil the biggest surprise that Marvel's been cooking up through many years? Of course he had to lie. Of course he had to say he wasn't gonna be in it. Everybody knew that that's what he had to say. He just, he deserves some recognition just on that level.
And that liar, Andrew Garfield, is in this movie. (laughs) Explicitly saying repeatedly in multiple interviews. I'm not in the movie. I'm not in the movie. I'm not in the movie. Pulls it off. Andrew Garfield standing there. It took off his mask. And I fucking high-fived the ceiling of the theater. Because I stood the fuck up. I was yelling. The whole theater was yelling. And I'm like, no, the fuck they didn't. They fucking did it. This reminds me of wrestling also, too. It's just like we haven't seen one of the old school kind of wrestlers in a long time. Oh, my time. God. Stone Cold. Yeah. Stone He's Cold. Back. He's back. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. It's Garfield. It's Garfield. You know? When Garfield popped that mask off, it was like being at the Super Bowl and your team just scored the winning touchdown. The cheer that I don't know if I've ever heard a cheer come out of an audience the way that it came out of the audience uh, tonight when they were watching this. The audience just erupts, right? There was people jumping up and down in their seats. We had people standing up in their seats. Everyone was shouting. Everyone was clapping. The guys in the row in front of me were hopping up and down, yelling. And we, we like you couldn't hear the next dialogue for the next 10 seconds of the movie. Because everyone was losing it, losing it. There are some gaps after those moments to kind of give for the audience to kind of recover. Not enough, though. And I think that it was just this moment of of catharsis because everybody's been sitting there wondering, is this going to happen? Is it not going to happen? It was this big buildup. And, you know, I I don't want to get too deep into it, but it feels like it kind of went beyond Spider-Man. It's almost like this is a shared moment that people have been craving for months or years. This idea that we could share this moment of revelation. It, it was a truly magical moment. And I know it seems dumb or silly or whatever when, when I talk about the shared theatrical experience, but these are the kind of things that you don't get any other way. It really was a moment of movie magic, and it's one that I will certainly never forget. The reason why I think it's perfect for Andrew Garfield to be the first Spider-Man to show up is because in Amazing Spider-Man 2, a big part of his debate that Andrew Garfield has with Harry Osborn is, I think, Spider-Man is trying to give people hope, inspire hope in people, and then when he has the scene with Dane DeHaan where he's rejecting giving him his blood, Dane DeHaan's like, I thought you were supposed to give people hope. I thought, you know, all that. So, to that effect, Effect, you have the most devastating, hopeless scene. And then the first feeling of hope and optimism <laughs> is the guy whom the last movie we saw him in was struggling to give people hope. He shows up. Hope is reinstilled right away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got to credit both Maguire and Garfield for so deftly slipping back into their mannerisms. You know, Tobey Maguire definitely seems a little older, but he slipped right in just as well as Andrew Garfield did. Andrew Garfield is... I'd say like a perfect human being, so it's easier for him. You see, no one in this movie phoned it in. I love that. I love the fact that they could have, you know, could have been Andrew Garfield shows up. He's like, yeah, sweet, just give me my paycheck. It's not like it's really my movie anyway. And like Andrew Garfield was like wildly committed to this part. Like he was giving in, uh, you know, like he was acting, you know, like some, like, you know, not that I think he deserves an Oscar, but like it was like he was like, I'm going to get an Oscar for this role. Like he is so... Um, emotionally invested in what is still, it's a large cameo, but it's still basically like a, you know, a little like fan service cameo in this movie. Like he is so, he's so in the moment. And so like he, you know, he looks like he's about to sob in like half of the scenes, Um, which is, you know, sort of lovely that he is, you know, that it's not just a, yeah, how much are you going to pay me to show up? Yeah, whatever. I'll put on the costume and I'll stand next to Tom Holland and I'll pat him on the back and say, good job, pal. You know, keep it up, true believer. Like, that was not what it was. He's forged a pretty successful career as a serious dramatic actor, so it would have been easy for him to turn down a role like this. Or even worse, phone in some half-arsed performance for a quick and easy payday. But it's the total opposite here. He's really going for it. You can practically feel how excited and happy he is to be playing Peter again. And the result is that he's a better Spider-Man here than he was in his own fucking movies. Andrew Garfield is giving it in this movie, like, full on, you know, like he's choking back tears at several points uh, in his performance. And I just really appreciated that um, he didn't treat it like this was just a paycheck, Um, you know, because 
to fans, this is not a paycheck. You know, the idea of these, they, they really love these characters and for them to meet is, uh, is like kind of a big deal to a lot of people. And what comes across in, especially Andrew's performance is that it's a big deal to him. None of them phoned it in. They were like, well, let's do the character, the movie, the franchise, and most importantly, the fans justice. I appreciate the hell out of that. And so that's not something I would have predicted either. No offense to Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire, but I wouldn't have begrudged them if they, you know, treated it like the gigantic paycheck that I'm sure it was. And they just walked out and were like, hey, flip, flip, flip. Okay, bye. You know, like I would not have been shocked if that's what it was. And, you know, to my surprise and my... Uh, uh, enjoyment, that's not what it was. And again, it's because it's not just Andrew Garfield in a costume popping in to say hi. It would have gotten probably the same kind of cheer, but it would not have affected audiences the same way. It's because we learn more about his character. There's a reason I picked the Andrew suit, and that's because you guys know he's my personal favorite Spider-Man, and the boy, I think, got some of the best lines in the movie. As soon as he showed up, I was like, I'm a Spider-Man. And I guess stayed that way for the next hour and a half. Like as it, soon as he showed up, I was like, it was I now know the truth. I've always thought Andrew Garfield was great as Peter Parker in Spider-Man. Thought he was a great choice. I thought he did a great job. Now, I really liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man because to me, that was the that was the Peter Parker I always had in my mind from the comics and the cartoon when I was young. A guy that had a little bit more, like Tobey Maguire was always a little bit too nerdy for me. He was just a little bit too lame. Peter Parker to me had always been someone a little bit smarter, um, a little bit snappier with his comebacks. And Andrew Garfield I think nailed that and I like to see that now in a much better film than the films that he was in. Um, he's really just allowed to shine. He's some great one-liners, um, some great chemistry with the other Spider-Men, the other Peter Parkers. This is maybe my favorite Andrew Garfield performance in any Spider-Man movie, including his own. Again, Andrew Garfield was amazing in the movie. He was really phenomenal. His face, his delivery, his dialogue. I mean, his charisma from right when he shows up and when he's in scenes with Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire. The dude oozes charisma. I thought they all had great chemistry together. It's just, it was so wonderful. It felt good. It felt good to watch this scene play out. Right. It felt good to see Andrew back in the suit yep. um, as Peter Parker. Yep. But for me, the man of the match has got to go to Andrew Garfield. Garfield, I feel like it's especially good. He's a well-trained British theater actor, very good at playing the sweeping emotional scenes and the fast-paced punchlines. And I thought a lot of the most funny moments in the film came from him. And yeah, it was really nice that he is the bright most bubbly of the three of them because it makes a lot of sense but also I think it's just really nice to see him back in a way where we can really enjoy the fun of his Peter Parker because you know Tasm 2 does get pretty dark pretty heavy for him to have him be the intro to that it was I think the ex exact right choice there, there, there's just the emotional vulnerability of Andrew Garfield's character in this movie that you don't really see in anybody else. It's not that no other characters get emotional in the film, but there's something in his expressions where he is just constantly dealing with the death of Gwen. And he's, he's constantly reliving that moment and he's angry. This is a deeply hurt and damaged person. We see the effect that Gwen's death has had on him. And he mentions the fact that he is filled with rage. He says he stopped pulling punches. This is a pretty violent Spider-Man. And we see that damage, we see that hurt, we see that anger. And we see how this experience affects him and how he can go back to his life having been changed by what he goes through in this movie by meeting these different versions of Spider-Man. So we get this deep well of pain and we get this advancement of his character and we get a bit of a payoff from a, a dangling loose end of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Like I love Andrew Garfield. He's definitely the best actor of the three. And I appreciate a lot of aspects of his two Spider-Man films, but I'm a Toby guy. They're all yes. of them. They're my guys, but I've always felt like out of all the three of them, Andrew Garfield's kind of like the most underdog. Like yeah, he's the kind of yeah. the most underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And I think after this movie, people are going to either say, I never saw his movies and I'm going to go back and watch them. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to go, actually, he's great. He's great. And my favorite yeah. now. Yeah. yeah so it's like redemption for him. And I didn't really enjoy the Garfield movies, but man, do I now love the Garfield movies. They retconned the Garfield movies into, because I've been on record on this channel as saying that Andrew Garfield Field is still my Peter Parker and still my Spider-Man. I actually love him as Spider-Man. 
and, I, and this just reinforced how good he is. I really loved Andrew Spider-Man the most in this movie. He was he was the depressed one, and, and he just needed a hug the most of the time, and I think him sharing conversations with Toby and Tom really was the highlight for the movie for me. Andrew just had so many of the best lines in the movie, and I felt like his character did get some sort of redemption. I mean, obviously he did by catching MJ at the end, but I feel like in terms of characterization and writing-wise, it was much more defined, whereas in the in his other two movies, it was kind of um, conflicting between does he want to help people or is he just there to make jokes? But here, it really it really shows like a different aspect of him making jokes. I think it's safe to say that this movie has the secondary function of redeeming Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. And if you ask me, out of the three, he is the most accurate to comic book Spider-Man in this movie. He's snarky, overconfident, charming, and with a bit of sadness deep down that he's trying to fight past. Also, Andrew's charisma is just off the charts in this movie. In the background of some shots, you can see him still using Peter's body language and affectations. You guys, yeah. Willem Dafoe showed up to yeah. this movie. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. This is, this he is, understood the assignment. In my, he yeah. understood this. In my opinion, this is his and this is this is his and Andrew Garfield's movie. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in this movie is stellar. He is incredible he's so good he's just the yeah. best which makes me feel even worse for him for his spider-man movies they were bad, they were bad movies, especially he's the last one, but... fucking running rings around everybody yeah. just constant he's I... standing next to toby Maguire, who i liked by the way yeah they're just not the they're not even yeah. close you're right he's running rings around the other two <laughs> like he's probably he's i feel he's got and again maybe maybe he feels to me like the the modern comic book version sure yeah. he feels like he's He's quippy and, but not in an annoying way. And he's like thirty, which is like the modern comic book and version. He's, and he's <laughs> he's like he's fast with the with the dialogue. Yeah. Like it's a good it's a good back and forth between everybody. And I mean, maybe they did that in editing, but then why wouldn't you do it with everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, like he seems like he's just having a blast and just mm. being like, I get another shot at this. Yeah, yeah. Because he was the one that you got the sense that, like, he didn't want to stop doing it. Yeah. And this very much felt like a redemption story yeah. for not only that character but for, for Andrew Garfield. Is he 30, Andrew Garfield? He's, he's my age, so he's, like, 38. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, he's a good 38. Mm. <laughs> but... he, does, he doesn't seem like he's aged at all. No, almost. he really does. And I like Andrew Garfield quite a bit as Spider-Man, even though I didn't really like his movies all that much. And I always felt very bad for him that he was so passionate about this character and wanted to do those movies and really wanted to make a impact. And he got cut off after two and he never really got to do anything else with it because Amazing Spider-Man 2 ends very sadly for him and for his character. And I just, it was depressing for me to think about Andrew Garfield's personal journey as Spider-Man. And so that's why I'm incredibly happy that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are actually in this movie. As happy as I was to see Maguire back again, ultimately he got his trilogy and didn't really need redemption here. Andrew Garfield on the other hand finally got a chance to put things right, showing us a little glimpse of what might have been, and I couldn't be happier for the guy. The Andrew Garfield thing makes me very happy because he was a huge Spider-Man fan beforehand and then was very upset by his movies, like, not working out, and I know that it, like, messed with him. And so, would say, but like, I know, I know it messed with him. And so like to see him have as much fun as he just did, I was like, I'm so happy for him. He finally did it. Like he's having his, so much fun doing this. And I, oh, uh, I loved it. The Oscar nominated actor who played Spidey from 2012 to 2014 radiated a love for the character that was beautiful to see. If you know anything about Garfield, you'll know he genuinely adores Spider-Man and that the franchise falling apart and being rebooted prematurely during his tenure ultimately broke his heart. No Way Home gave Garfield a second chance, and by God, he grabbed it with both hands. Seeing Tobey Maguire again was a treat, obviously. But Garfield, Garfield had unfinished business. Yeah. For that, the man came in with a goal, you right. know? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make the fans love me until they beg for me to come back. And surprisingly, one of my biggest takeaways from this movie was actually Andrew Garfield. He's great in it. I mean, like, he packs so much fucking emotion into essentially the third act of the movie that it almost could fill up its own movie. He he showed up for this. Just based on empirical evidence of talking to people every time we went to watch this movie, because we watched it three times, mm -hmm. it seems like Andrew Garfield stole the show. 
And people really want him back. Yes. Or at the very least, if he didn't steal the show, he stole the scene he was in. Right. You know, because I know that scenes. there are a lot. Yeah, exactly. Scenes. I know that there were a lot of people who were like, wait, no, but this is also Tom Holland's best movie. Come yeah. on now. Like, it's not just Andrew Garfield. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Andrew Garfield's acting in he's, that He, like, scene. steals the movie. Yeah. No, he, the he whole steals, movie, bro. He's so good. No, for real. Every he's so scene good. he was in, I was like, yes. you're my favorite one. He's the I, funniest. I love, I love. What's his name? Tom yeah. Holland, but yeah. Andrew Garfield yeah. is my favorite yeah. one. I love Toby. I love Tom. But after after seeing all three Spider Men interact, it was so clear to me that Andrew is just the best. And I'm telling you, I was watching them all together, and Andrew stood out yeah. more than anyone. It made me miss Andrew Garfield as Spider Man. I love Tom Holland, but I think like Andrew Garfield after watching this movie. I'm like, he really is a scene stealer in every moment of this movie he's in. And Toby's always been my favorite, yeah. but man, when they're actually on ca camera together for like 25 minutes, it's like, dude, I think Andrew might be my favorite. Yeah, I think he, after watching the movie, I think Andrew's my favorite. Scene. And the acting in the film, I would say Andrew Garfield is a standout for me. Like, he's yeah. my favorite by far. Andrew Garfield is so good. He is so good at Peter Parker. He's so good at the emotions and what he went through. It's like... Honestly, in a lot of ways, he stole the show when it came to all three of the Peter Parkers and Spider-Man there. He kind of stole it, in my personal opinion. He was just awesome. Yo, Andrew stole the show. Andrew, Andrew was acting his ass off. Andrew was acting like he's auditioning for another Spider-Man movie. I feel like a lot of the time, Andrew Garfield, like, inadvertently stole, stole, the, show. The, stole the show. He yeah. stole the scene because he is so so good and i did love all of those moments that you were saying where he had that emotional vulnerability and it paid off he carried every single scene he was in like his spider-man is just so complex he's funny and witty and quippy when he's spider-man and he had like the majority of the comedic scenes when it was all three of them but then he's also very serious and emotional when he needs to be and it was just like Every single scene Andrew was in was so good. How good was Andrew Garfield in No Way Home? Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire were obviously incredible, but it was Garfield reprising his role from the Amazing Spider-Man movies that really stole the show in my eyes. Mm -hmm. the I mean, well, it showed you who was better, and I like that. It yeah, Andrew Garfield. <sighs> bro, Andrew Garfield handled them villains, bro. He, I'm not gonna yeah. deny you, bro. Andrew Garfield showed, like, bro, I'm fast y'all. they I'm, said it. I'm best web sling. They didn't have to say it. They showed it. That's what I love. Yeah, they both jumped saying. off. They was doing it like, oh, okay, why did, why did I get down like him? I like that in the movie. Uh, who's your favorite Spidey in the film? Not ever just in the film. Garfield. I, I think Andrew, man. Garfield. I think Andrew for me, and yeah. I, I was awesome. I mean, as you can see, Andrew's Spider-Man is um, very much the, I feel like he is the funniest of the three. And you can definitely see that in the banter between the three of them. Andrew Garfield was fantastic in Ned's living room. I, it just worked seamlessly. The dialogue between him and Zendaya or MJ is fun because like she throws the bread at him. And, <laughs> and he's yeah. like hanging on the ceiling. It's it's just the simple things. Tobey Maguire is the really cool youth pastor. Come on, it's like one of the best lines in the movie delivered by Andrew Garfield. And look, I'm not just saying this because Andrew is my personal favorite Spider-Man. But I think Andrew got some of the funniest lines, some of the best moments. Even just how Andrew Garfield's character already understands the multiverse string theory, how he was listing all that off, just reminding us that every Peter Parker is smart in their own way. This movie acknowledges Andrew Garfield is the most agile and he has the best reflexes of all the Spider-Man. the he... best web slinging. Yes, his web sling is like the game, bar none. As they, an inventor. They acknowledge that in the movie. And Toby Peter shows how his webbing, unlike the others who use mechanical web shooters, comes freakishly out of his wrists. I love how Andrew plays super grossed out. And even when Tom Holland moves the conversation along, he even continues staring at Toby's wrist for a beat before he's like, oh, okay, yeah, what? I can't even really express it. Like, I didn't know what I was looking at. When Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man was helping Toby Maguire as Spider-Man deal with his back problems, <laughs> it's like, how is this real life? What is going on right now? This is insane. Seeing Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland talk to each other in the pointing scene. Like, <laughs> all that yeah. stuff was super cool. Even Peter 1, Peter 2, Peter 3. That, yeah. that got a little confusing, though, to figure out who, who was who. I so love was, Peter it, 3, though, because yeah. Andrew Garfield being the old Spider-Man that I see him as is self-deprecating. Peter 3, like, that was yeah. such a great moment. That, I'm like, yeah. that's my guy. Yeah. yeah. We get that Andrew Garfield humor. That's what really set him apart was the effortless humor when he was playing Spider-Man. Like, he's just... I always wanted brothers. You know? So excited that that part where he was like, "I love you guys," yeah, and then they're both like, 
Thank you. Yeah. One of my favorite moments in the th- in the movie, and it's a small performance, is when they're kind of mid-fight and they're trying to figure out how to work as a team and just this kind of begrudging whatever when he acknowledges that he's going to be known as Peter Three. It's just such a great little moment, and he has so many of those throughout the film, but also these great dramatic moments. I, I just loved him so much in this movie. I also liked how this Peter feels a little insecure next to the other Spider-Man here, talking about how he felt like he was the lamest one while the others re- assure him that he's not. It was a good moment in a movie that felt like a real redemption for his take on the character. Toby Peter talks him up, saying he's actually amazing, giving Andrew Garfield the credit he deserves. I love that they kept calling Andrew Garfield amazing. Yeah, I know. Like, oh my god. No, I'm not as great as you guys. Like, no, you're amazing. It's kind of like a meta of like, well, no one liked the second trilogy or whatever. It's like, no, we people liked it. Come on. Sure. You know, you deserve a seat at this table. Especially when he was like, man, I'm just like not, like I felt like a Russian guy in a rhino suit. Like, I'm not as cool. And they're like, no, you're cool. I was like, you're good. Don't worry about it. I was like, I feel, I feel, I felt like they were talking to me for yeah. liking those movies so mm-hmm. much. I was like, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Because Andrew Garfield's my dude. I will, he will always be my Spider-Man. I don't know why, but I just, yeah. He's still amazing. And now he's got his brothers. Andrew Garfield and, um... Toby, Toby Maguire are both in the film, and they fucking deliver. I wanted more screen time. Ah, man. me too. Their little banter They're back and so forth. They're so good. Like, like, it was great. I fucking mm-hmm. love their chemistry together. It was... What? I wanted more. An amazing... Uh, and the audience was really yeah. into it. But when Andrew Garfield and Toby Maguire joined the fray, the dynamic between the three Spider-Mans, the three Peter Parkers... That's where the movie really shines. And it's not just the familiarity of these Spider-Man heroes that we've seen before and the Spider-Man villains we've seen before. The chemistry among Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland, that's really where the movie hits its peak, hits its stride. The chemistry between Tobey, Andrew, and of course Tom is awesome. Awesome. This makes the film. It really does. Everybody else takes a back seat to these three guys. They, it was just so cool to see. And to see them fighting together. Yeah. There was something that just, it, it kind of just made your heart swell when they all swung into frame together and like they land the iconic Spider-Man landing and they're all there, all three of them. It's just like, oh my God. And to me, this was the three of them at their best. It all three so of them good. gave their That's, best Spider-Man You, can, you know what I want, why? All three of them were having a lot of fun. They were oh, just having man. a time of their lives. Yeah. I, I guarantee you. Because Andrew's such a big fan of to- Toby and Tom and vice versa. I, and I think both of them, like you said, like obviously Tom is excited because this is a big culmination and all that. But the other two, the, watching it and knowing how iconic this yeah. was going to be, they were like, well, let's just This is the biggest moment it. of our lives. It let's is. suit I, up. I, and then they address Andrew Garfield to where he adds, he adds his bit of tragedy regarding Gwen. And this was the best scene with Andrew Garfield. Gwen was my MJ and talked about, and you saw he does that thing. He's it's a great crier, Andrew Garfield. And he does that thing where it's so painful to him to even think about that moment. Arguably my favorite moment in the entire film is when Tom's Peter and MJ are having a moment together and Andrew just glances at them wistfully, reminiscing about his time with Gwen, about the future they could have had together and wanting that future for Tom, yet come to the sad conclusion that love and companionship isn't in the cards for people like him. Besides Aunt May, he has, to me, one of the most emotional parts in the movie. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And as great as these moments are, I think my personal favorite, and again, it goes back to Andrew Garfield, and, and, and it's a moment that, honestly, I think a lot of people saw coming. But there's one moment in particular that I loved. As far as crying and stuff, too, the, the one that got me the most that I wasn't expecting. I think my favorite moment in the entire film, again, goes back to Andrew Garfield, which is when he rescues MJ. Yes. Know? Oh, my God. That moment was so cool. And then when he saved MJ. Redem- oh, my God. Oh, my God. We talk about that so much. In theory, that scene I'm about to discuss shouldn't work for me because I could easily think it's cheap and doesn't necessarily mean anything to Andrew's Peter, who's just met the people he's working with. But in this case, nah. Nah, no way, no way. That scene rules. Andrew saving MJ soars. The Gwen scene in particular really stands out as one of the best moments in the whole movie. When Andrew Garfield 
talks about Gwen, like you were saying, you feel that pain. And so we're reminded of that. And then when that iconic moment happens and you see her falling and it's like, oh no, Tom Holland can't save her. And then yeah, Andrew Garfield swoops in and he manages to save her. And then he's like, holding back tears because he saves the girl this time. Even just talking about Uh, it kind of messes with me emotionally. So good. You know, because it was such a huge loss. (laughs) God, it's like even just thinking about it just messes me up because he does such a good job at making it feel real. Yes. All of it made me smile uh, from Andrew getting a moment with uh, catching and saving a girl and you see it in his face and they fucking know that you fucking know and it was just... It was just, mm, it was good. Having that moment where Andrew's Peter Parker got to save MJ. Oh, I'm just like picturing his face when he was crying after asking her if she was okay. And she's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And he just started like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Just kind of made me want to die. So that was fun. Let's not even talk about the scene where he saves MJ because that scene was probably my favorite scene in this entire movie. Ah, like it, that was just, I understand that it was nostalgia bait. I understand all of that, but fuck, man. And it got a huge pop, obviously, in the theater because of that moment. He was able to save her. You saw that that moment of, like, I feel like redemption that he gave himself yeah. in that moment, too. And it was just, ugh, it was so good. It's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, yeah, are you okay? Yeah. Like, he's just, ah, it's it's an amazing moment. It's truly an incredible moment. triumphant moment the audience goes crazy yeah. i went crazy i was like that is that feels so fucking good because our man spider-man got done dirty in that film but it's a it, i'm not saying it shouldn't have happened in that film it should have you know spider-man heroes should go through these tragic mm-hmm. moments but to get this kind of redemption moment is just fucking awesome and it was oh amazing. yeah then he had his tears that in made his me eyes fucking, he's like, oh, yeah, okay? it was, it was like okay? i was crying so like, that's yeah, good that's a good scene it was, it was a great my, really my scene. eyes teared up alongside Andrew Garfield's. I think one of the best moments in this, this is the moment I thought you were talking about, which is the best moment, okay. where uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man saves MJ. Oh, yeah. And like the catch in itself is like, it's fine, it's whatever. Yeah. But the bit that worked for me was that Andrew Garfield had that kind of moment of redemption where he, he didn't catch the, the previous yeah. person uh-huh. he dropped. And he kind of takes a moment to like, you know, like catch his breath and yeah, like compose yeah, yeah. himself. And I thought that was... That was really nice. And so we kind of know that Garfield's going to swing in and save her. But it's it's that moment afterwards when he saves her and he says, are you OK? And you see this mixture of like happiness and grief. And again, closure. You're giving this character closure. What sells this moment even further is how Andrew starts to cry. He succeeded where he previously failed. He got his second chance and made it count so that this younger alternate version of himself can live with love. And yes, I may have shed a tear or two when this happened. Again, going back to that thing I was saying before, it's in the eyes. He doesn't need to say, oh, I just redeemed, I just did that thing that I really needed to do in my life of what the Gwen Stacy moment, I was just able to do that now. It's like, you didn't need, you didn't need to. He just looked and he was able to do what he couldn't do at the end of the Amazing Spider-Man 2. And he, and he catches and he catches her and it's a great emotional moment just the performance just the shot on his face really powerful really strong that was another moment that truly made me cry out of happiness and sadness because i for a second thought they were going to kill mj when tom holland missed because of the glider hitting him but the way they played it off with andrew garfield saving her and you knowing exactly what that means to him because he didn't get a chance to save gwen and this is the movie's way of kind of redeeming him for that accident and the look on his face hoping that mj is okay it's like this movie, thank you for existing. The beautiful part about that moment isn't, isn't isn't even the fact that he saves her. It's the fact when they land yeah. and he goes, "Are you okay?" And yeah. he's got his and eyes he, full and they of have tears. a moment and yes. he starts crying. Yeah. Oh my 
my god. And yeah. you understand as the audience why. Yeah. And then she off. looks at him and she goes, "Are you okay?" <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, "What a payoff." <gasps> And, I, and it did happen, but no matter how much you predicted it, man, it did not it prepare you for how that scene played out. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the tears on him, because he hardly said anything. I like when he, it moved me so much when he asked MJ. After saving her, he says, you all right? And she's like, God damn, you all right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he cries through about half his scene. Yes, yes, he does. Yes. <laughs> I was like... Man, I feel sorry for you, but you got to stop crying. <laughs> but we, we, we got to fight here. <laughs> it was called it, that. It was deserved right there. Yeah. yeah. Like he just those tears just said it all. Yeah. Because he because he didn't explain to her. Right. Right. There was no right, big exposition. Right. He just said, "Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm all right." I loved that. That one got me, yep, and that was, was the one that I wasn't that was expecting the, the most. And I couldn't believe it. It was so good. Uh, probably one of the most emotional moments of the whole final act was when Andrew Garfield is able to save MJ from falling off the side of the Statue of Liberty, and they held on it for just long enough for him to be like, I did it, and I saved somebody. And I didn't really care about that movie that much. No, but... But, like, having him actually, like... It was really good. Like, it's very small moments of them realizing that I'm okay and I did it. And, like, and she's like, are you okay? And he's like... I am now, and I gotta get back to the fight, but like... Man, when he is like realizing that he fixed that mistake or that he, you know, that he did it and that just raw emotion that came out of him, even the part earlier where he's kind of just orally describing what's happened to him in the years since, and he's like, I'm not the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and I don't pull my punches anymore. That made me want to see what the hell happens to that character more than anything I've, more than the actual Amazing Spider-Man films. And I think it was a nice kind of swan song for that universe, that part of the multiverse, and I'm glad that we got that. Like when, when, when Garfield keeps talking about how he couldn't save Gwen and he was like, I just went into a rage and I became bitter. And I was like, yeah, I, but to that point, I wanna see that movie. Can, like maybe, can we? It's also having me chomping at the bit for an Amazing Spider-Man 3. I know I'm harping a lot on Andrew Garfield here, and perhaps a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm biased towards his portrayal of the character and his films, and especially what they did with him in this film. Honestly, this made me want to see him return to the role again in some form. Not take over for Holland, but maybe show up in a Spider-Verse, or a Venom sequel, maybe a Spider-Gwen movie. The guy is just a rock-solid Spider-Man whose films were completely mismanaged by Sony. And if he has any interest in reprising the role of Peter Parker, I think he should get to. I won't lie, man. Like, I'm serious when I say this. Part of me wants them to go back with Garfield's universe and make some separate movies that are just like offshoots with him again. Just do it. Just make it better than the other two. I'd watch the shit out of those. Give us Andrew Garfield. Give us Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man 3. Perhaps that's why less than a day after No Way Home's first screening, The Amazing Spider-Man 3 started trending online, with Garfield once again reminding us all just how truly fantastic he is as Peter Parker. The internet has fired up the old petition machine in an effort to get him the third solo movie that was canceled all those years ago. I mean, after this movie, the the cries that were that are going to be heard around the world for the amazing spider-man 3 are going to be insane and rightfully so i want to see andrew come back and play this character more I, like i don't want this to be the final time we see andrew garfield play spider-man because it, it felt like you, you know you just feel the passion that andrew has when he plays this character it, it always pours through in his performance and i want to see more of it i'm so happy that there is the possibility that Andrew Garfield may be the Spider-Man in the Venom universe. Please, Sony, please, Sony, please. If you are listening to me, Sony, if you are listening to me, Avi, make Andrew Garfield the Spider-Man of the Venomverse. Please. All I'm saying is like, whatever Sony is trying to do right now, include Andrew Garfield in there. Uh, give us the amazing Spider-Man 3, because I, I need more of that. I need more. I feel like he's the... Now, especially after No Way Home, he's the only Spider-Man that really didn't get, like, a good redemption arc, so to speak.